A sheep man fucked the sheep. This is spoilers. This is spoilers. (laughs) Ooh, that's a good one. I'm a little disappointed because coming out of the Green Knight, the big question was who had sex with the sheep? And it just ended up being a sheep man (laughs) creature. Sheep man, Pop. (laughs) Uh, But hey, everybody, this is Pappy. Uh, New crew tonight. Not replacing our old crew by any means but a first time guest on the podcast and returning guest kylo or host kylo uh let's introduce our host um do a little opening question here if this is your first episode of spoilers we like to ease into it uh let our hosts sort of introduce themselves provide a little bit of context about them so we'll start with you Corey. um name the podcast that you started and then also name um your, the opening question is you're gonna have an offspring you're going to adopt an offspring. The band? I'm going to take them under my wing? No, no, no. This is a, a found infant creature that you're going to have to raise until adulthood. And it's half human, half animal. But you get to pick the half animal. What would you pick? This is Corey, Kylo Ren memes. I'm recording out of Simi Valley, California. I already forget if you asked me that specifically. I didn't. I run Big Dumb Movie. That's my podcast that I created... It's a lot of fun. Pappy's been on a bunch of times. I'm going to have Ronnie here on shortly, but we'll get to him in a minute. Um, But to provide context about who I am, Pappy, it really comes down to the animal kid question, right? Mm -hmm. This, I think, will tell a lot about me. No, it it won't. So, so I, I don't know, man. This is a weird question. I'd say, like, a bat boy oh like the weekly world because of the bat boy thing and i could be like look i found a bat boy in a cave it's real and then like <laughs> that will be in like mainstream news i don't know that was just kind of something i was kicking around to be honest the idea of having a half animal half kid like in this movie is really fucking horrifying and if i'm being <laughs> honest dude i'd probably take the shotgun Take it out back like oh, like my. Peter did and put that fucker <laughs> down, old Yeller style. I mean, that's not... Can't do it. I mean... <laughs> You'd kill the Bat Boy? I'd kill the Bat Boy. That's horrible. It's simple. We kill the Bat Boy. <laughs> so you're going with the half DNA, right? Because Bat Boy, he, he had features of a boy, but he also had like teeth of a bat and like ears of a bat. So you're really going kind of like right down the middle. It's half bat boy yeah he just has bat legs but i'm gonna kill him anyway (laughs) (laughs) because it doesn't really matter you guys are coming in really really hard with uh, goat fucking and infanticide nice (laughs) yes this is what kind of podcast we have all we have to do is kill a dog and it's officially an a24 movie but that voice (laughs) you just heard uh first time appearing on spoilers i think well i'll let you introduce your podcast ronnie but uh yeah go ahead what what would be your human creature hybrid oh off um let's go uh, i don't think there's a good answer to this i was thinking of some weird ones but if i'm gonna be like pragmatic i guess i'll have like a, a half giraffe child i have an irrational fear of heights so then i could use mm. the, the giraffe child to do things that i don't want to do like get on ladders and whatnot so hey, giraffe boy get on that ladder and fix the ceiling <laughs> <laughs> Fix the roof. Exactly. Giraffes are known to not have fear of ladders. Giraffe boy, the gutters need clean. Go ahead and chew those out. <laughs> it's like a perfect snack for him too. Just clean up the gutters. Um, so I'm Ronnie. Um, I co-host uh, Wasted Potential podcast. Um, really, really briefly, um, we're a terrible, terrible podcast that disagree. <laughs> that, Strong that, disagree. That, under the guise of a movie podcast, but we really don't talk about the movie. We ramble. We drink too much on the podcast. We don't listen to each other. My uh, co-host Shane and I are <laughs> old, old friends. We say awful things to each other because we love each other. So It's true. You do say awful things to each other. I just want to <laughs> say, man, when I first saw your Instagram page and started following you and I checked out your podcast, I think it was Free Willy. <laughs> that I first listened to. And I was like, these guys do not give a fuck. And Dude, I love it. It's pretty great. Um, also, one of the great opening bits of any podcast, the the ads that you guys do, the uh, the sponsored reads, pretty <laughs> yeah. fantastic. I was like, how are more people like not doing this like fake ad thing? Like, this is good. Well, there's a lot of like cringy, like red letter media, like red letter media spinoff, like 
sketches that people try to do before their podcast, right? But you guys is always makes me fucking laugh. Like, I because I, the first time I listened, I thought they were real ad reads. So I was like, wait a fucking second, <laughs> wait a fucking second. <laughs> it does borderline on like. Hold on, are they th- what is this product? I've never heard of it. I'm like, oh, this is obviously some, some big shit. <laughs> it's just close enough. A, a little misleading, similarly <laughs> to how A24 makes the most misleading trailers of all time. Um, I first saw this trailer in front of the Green Knight. Like we mentioned, we did a podcast on that. Um, the trailer racked up 6 million YouTube views in a little over a month. Um, I think it's around 6 or 7 million now won the prize for originality at the con can what however you say it film festival Corey, we'll start with you because i love asking you this question how would you describe lamb to someone who had never seen it before let's see how would i describe lamb i would say it's an a24 movie and then i drop the mic and walk out <laughs> the quintessential a24 movie is lamb <laughs> yes and, but, I mean, a lot of people have seen the trailer. I saw the trailer as well, Pappy, in front of the Green Knight. I am also a uh, A24 film viewer, if I do say so myself, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a cinephile, true Kino. <laughs> yeah. Pretension, pretension, pretension. <laughs> so I had the same thought that everyone had, right? We all thought this, does a man fuck a sheep in this movie? And that's what we're here for. Yes. Right? That's why we all saw this movie, and you guys know it. Don't even try to deny it. That's why anyone who's going to see this movie based on the trailer sees it. They want to know, one, is he going to fuck the sheep? And two, are they going to show it? Are we prepared to answer those questions? (laughs) I only want to answer those questions. Um, The... um, So we haven't haven't really discussed this, like, off the... The podcast, so I have no idea what your guys' thoughts on this movie actually are, which is really funny. I love this. I'm just going to this blind. But the entire film, I was sitting there for the first, because it's, it's done in three chapters, three parts, three acts. And the whole first act, I was like, come on, like answer my fucking question. <laughs> does he fuck this goat? They're like, does he fuck the sheep or not? Because the very beginning, it's an ominous kind of opening, and it's something approaches the, you don't see it, obviously, it's just the camera. When he approaches the sheep, I'm like, oh, that poor fucking sheep. Mm-hmm. That's a man who's had a lot of liquor approaching. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cold night in Iceland. It gets lonely. Um, the color grading, too, right? It's got this, like, bluish, grayish tone. It, it's very much a, um, not to use, like, the words that everybody uses, like a reflection, like a kind of a, sl- a slow burn, obviously. But it, it takes advantage of... It's Icelandic scenery. And we have a Patreon, Matt Troll, who hails from um, this part of the world. Not Iceland specifically, but Scandinavia. It feels like all of these movies kind of have this weird creature angle to them as well. I mean, you got beautiful mountains, you got weird creatures. But this movie seems to be more of a family drama. Ronnie, did you... I guess you you talked about the first chapter and we're all waiting for the sheep baby to come out. Mm -hmm. As the relationship is unfolding, did you enjoy that slow burn at the beginning? Uh, so I love me an A24 film. I, I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm pretentious, but I'm fucking pretentious as shit when it comes to my horror movies. Yeah. I love horror. And I think it all pays off because the entire time it just kind of, you know, what's going to happen, you know, something, some kind of like ha- hybrids going to come out of the sheep and you're just waiting and you're like waiting for this to happen. It also kind of ties into like the, the creepy tone in the beginning of like this, foreboding force that's like surrounding this area so it slowly just delves out information with so little dialogue and you're like what the fuck is going on in this movie so then by i don't want to jump too far but by the time chapter two comes around it gives you enough and that kind of brings me in so then by chapter three i'm fully into this film and then by the absolute ending i'm like fuck now i'm like heartbroken hmm Corey, what do you pick up on the relationship between Ingvar and Maria? Maria, uh, she's in Prometheus. I forget who she is in Prometheus, but she's the star of the movie by far. I think she, her performance and her role requires the most acting, and it, she carries the f- movie for me in, in that regard. Well, you got our two uh, classic, you know, farmers living on their own. They do everything themselves, you know, they work with their hands. They are 
uh, very much the type of people that I am not and could never be <laughs> in many ways. Mm-hmm. Could you deliver a sheep like they do in this movie? Which they actually did, by the way. Uh, that was a real sheep giving birth that the uh, actors participated in. You can, you can pretty much tell that's an actual sheep. That is um, very, very realistic. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anything like it in a movie. You see a sheep leaving another sheep's sheep vagina like it's it's like i mean like as explicit and like if you're squeamish that's gonna like get you a little bit i think that did make me squeam a little bit in fact now that you mention it you know that it's pretty fucking gross i have long said uh, i don't fuck with animals and i maintain that to be true (laughs) i don't know man like that's like the one thing i think of when i'm in a movie when they're like working with a lot of animals very closely i'm like i can't I don't know what this animal is going to do to me right now, you know, like, (laughs) but yeah, it's very, it's very visceral. And, uh, I think it's appropriate for this type of movie. You know, it's a very gray, somber feel with like almost, uh, tragic and horrific music swelling in at times. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's uh, something like that is really perfect for a movie like this. So I I think that works really well. Mm -hmm. Ingvar looks like a young John Ritter. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> uh, around the uh, 1990 It miniseries era, and I just could not shake that for the life of me. I'm like, man, <laughs> this dude can start doing some like Pennywise shit any moment now, and I'd be into it. He's like a sad Chris Pratt to me, kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Sad Chris Pratt? Yeah. Um, but back to the relationship, uh, you can tell in the beginning there's a strain because uh, Ingvar is happy, and oh, what's her name? I know Maria. It's new, Maria. Maria Numi Rapace, um, or how you pronounce it. She's apprehensive because they talk about like the whole time travel thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of like a throwaway dialogue, just like, oh, they can do time travel now. And they're like, what do you mean? It's like, oh, it's theoretical. And he's like, oh, it'd be cool to see the future. And she's like, well, I want to see the past. It's not really subtle, but there's not a lot of dialogue. So it, like there's little things just kind of doled out there. So obviously something's happened in the past to them that is strained their relationship they're not they're not in any way affectionate they're very isolated and cold for lack of a better word and we find out what that thing is i think it's in chapter two but they, they've had a child who's passed away right they they visit the grave of the child they've they've lost a child this has pl- placed a tremendous strain on their relationship as a couple but the sheep god works in mysterious ways and this Icelandic <laughs> couple is blessed with a half sheep half baby named Ada. I guess what are you guys' thoughts on like sort of the character design of Ada? I think she's fucking adorable. One of the best characters of the movie. I think this is a hundred percent in the movie's favor, because just to quickly really quickly, yes, absolutely adorable, and I buy it, but they slowly show you the the half sheep baby because mm-hmm. I think they realize if you don't build a connection or at least know that the family loves it. Before you see, you know, little sheep head walking around on like, on like a little child body, you're just going to be laughing your ass off. So it, even though it is kind of still humorous to see it, it you still feel like they think it's real and I'm going to buy this. I wonder what it's like for people that haven't seen this trailer, you know, because I saw the trailer. I saw a little sheep head humanoid in the trailer. But let's say you haven't seen it, right? They are delivering little sheep baby lamb, I guess, lambs. I don't know. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them are normal. And then later on, there's another one, and they don't show it. They just show the head. So it looks like it could be normal, but they're very freaked out by it. And they go from being freaked out by it to being very nurturing toward it very quickly. right? They take it in the house where all the other animals are in the barn. They wrap it up in a towel, and they're you know feeding it out of a bottle every day and very much treating it like it's their own baby. And then there is a moment when it's revealed that it has, like, pretty much a fully human body with just, like, a (laughs) sheep head. And then later on, we kind of see, well, there's also, like, a a mangled, like, sheep arm. One human arm, one sheep arm. I think they, like, show its butt. It's, like, the first shot that you see of its lower body. It's little sheep baby butt. (laughs) But it's, like, a human butt, right? It's, like, smooth baby butt. Right, yeah. Yeah, no tail, no fluffy tail. That would have been adorable, too, a little tail. I think there. that would have been a little, little too goofy, <laughs> but once again, <laughs> this is an absolute... You know what's so weird? The, you already mentioned that the trailer is batshit because, like, it doesn't... Because I, I, I wanted to see this film. Kind of like you guys, I saw the trailer before The Green Knight in theaters. So then I was like, this is so my movie. I want to see this because I thought I was going to get really, f- 
like it's already weird, but I thought it was gonna go a completely different direction because if you listen to the trailer, it plays like the, the really happy go lucky song. You're like, this is gonna be fucking strange, and it's actually <laughs> much more subtle and subdued, and it kind of it really won me over surprisingly. I had a couple of theories about this based on the trailer. I was like, all right, the guy fucking a sheep is pretty obvious. It might be something totally <laughs> different. It might be that they have a, an actual sheep that they see as like a baby, but other people see as like a sheep. Uh, mm. Like a whole Wilfred thing? Is it Wilfred? Yeah, kind of like a Wilfred thing. I thought that might kind of come up. Obviously, it doesn't. It's uh, <laughs> it's like it's like the old uh, the fly, like the original one, like just mm-hmm. like where they had like the fly head on a man's body. <laughs> it's like that most <laughs> of the time, sheep head on a human body. But it looks really fucking good. Here's the thing: if you hadn't seen the trailer, I think the first act would be way more boring. You know, because you're like you're. I would be like, what is this? Like, like, let's say you just went in this movie totally blind. Like, you just sat down in the theater. They're going to screen some oh random God. movie. <laughs> the first, like, 20 minutes, you're like, what the fuck is this movie? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, because the whole time when they're giving birth to sheep, you're like, is this a sheep baby? Or now are we going to see the sheep baby? <laughs> is it? Is it a mistake, though, that we don't... We aren't left with the question of if this guy f- fucked a sheep for longer because like, you could kind of get that vibe from the opening scene that maybe this is the guy stumbling in from a hard day's work and he looks at a sheep and you know things one go thing leads sideways. to another we've all been there what even makes it weirder too is there's that scene i think in chapter one maybe other chapter two when um uh ingvar is in his tractor and he's crying i'm like okay so he fucked the sheep then right yeah, yeah. And, and it's obvious it's, it's not what it is it's him like they're going through trauma, and this is like Ada's kind of helping them out of that trauma. But I was like, so he did fuck the sheep then. And then that was obviously not how it happened. But they give it away because at one point Ada comes out of the house, and you don't really get a good look at the the sheep man who I talked about in the opening spoiler, but you do get enough of it in a reflection of a sheep's eyes to, to at that point at least realize that there are supernatural forces happening. Corey, is it... Do you wish we would have been left with that question for longer? That if he fucked the sheep, like did he, didn't he, kind of question? No, I think it was. It went on as long as it possibly could. My opinion. See, I want a whole movie like that. But <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm the disappointed one because I didn't see the the half sheep sheep fucking man in the eye. I I totally missed that for whatever reason. So I had the pleasure of thinking this guy fucked a sheep for half a movie. It was hard to see the reflection in the eye. I had no idea what I was looking at. Before we get to that sort of supernatural element, there is another character who comes in, Pitor. Uh, Ronnie, you want to tell us a little bit about Pitor and like what he injects into the story? <laughs> um, this is when this movie kicks into me loving it because... He, he, for me, at least my interpretation of Pitor, which is a lot of things, but for me, he is the audience walking into the situation going, <laughs> hold on, did you fuck that sheep? Or like, what's going on here? How come, like, no one's addressing the, the sheep in the room right here? Like, like no one's addressing this at all. Like, like there is a half sheep child right here eating eggs and, like, cereal. Like, what the fuck is going on? And it's a, but it's, it's, it's 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 kind of funny because Pitor kind of okay well I guess his character he's um Ingvar's brother there's a backstory I'm not sure how much you like to spoil in spoilers but it's in the name all of it so uh, so Pitor and uh, fucking what's her name um, Maria and Maria I was gonna keep calling her Sarah <laughs> uh, but um uh, Pitor and Sarah oh, fucking Pitor and Maria have a back uh, a history of cheating uh, against uh, I'm guessing from my interpretation is after they lost their child maybe uh, she and Ingvar didn't have sex so maybe she cheated on Ingvar with her brother but he's like a wannabe rock star that kind of he's thrown out of a van so he seems like he's a he needs money he seems like a, a scallywag um, so he's kind of just comes into the situation and fucks it up and he's questioning the happiness he is the audience looking in, he's the meddler on the outside, so it kind of goes to that dichotomy of the the couple is messing with nature, but Peter is messing with their happiness type of thing. Mm-hmm. Corey, did you like Peter, Peter in this movie? Yeah, definitely. I like how, it, like, when we first meet him, I was, like, so fucking confused, man. Because they live in the middle of nowhere, our two main characters, and then we see a car come down the road, and when the people in the car get out of the car, they're like, Icelandic street toughs. <laughs> the Icelandic mafia. Yeah. They open the trunk and they 
I think they toss this motherfucker out of the trunk and then they drive off. Like, what the fuck just happened? Mm-hmm. Like, they, I think, isn't that what happened? They just, like, like he was, like, tied up in the trunk or something? Mm-hmm. And this is, like, the first other human to enter the movie, right? So you're, you're kind of wondering, you know, is this a criminal? Is he going to hurt the sheep? Is he going to be freaked out? Um, it's a slow burn even to reveal that he is, you know, family in this movie. He sleeps in the barn the first night. So you're kind of like, is this going to be, you know, violent, a thriller of some kind? But no, it's more of a family drama. Yeah, because when they see him, they're just like, oh, hey. And I thought it was just like Icelandic hospitality. Like, hey, <laughs> want to come inside and have some breakfast? But he goes inside and they're like, oh, call in uh, Ada, or I think it might be Ida. And then this sheep fucking person walks in and he's like, the look on his face, like he just walked into the fucking island of Dr. Moreau. And he says, what the fuck is this? Like, I laughed out loud when he said that. He's, a, he's entirely the conflict because later in the film, he basically blackmails um, Maria. Maria, god damn it. Um, he blackmails Maria into having some more sex, otherwise he's going to tell... Ada that that Maria killed Ada's mother, which is so fucked up and I'm wonderful. I'm like, what a like an absolute like scoundrel, awful like asshole. <laughs> That's what an '80s synth pop band will do to you, man. It fucks you up. <laughs> and like, there's kind of this dynamic where you see this a lot in older movies. There'll be like a male protagonist. There'll be two kind of female characters or love interests, right? And one's usually dressed in black, and one's like blonde and dressed in white and it's kind of like this dichotomy like, i guess peter is like the bad boy right mm-hmm. and it's almost like maria going in between these two because ingvar is pure wholesomeness right he just wants to do his woodworking all day he is a hard worker he just wants to tend to his farm peter almost kind of represents this like darker side and, and he obviously takes things too far with trying to blackmail her for sex but they have a big handball party uh where alcohol is a lot of alcohol is being consumed and the film lingers on this for a while. This may have been a part where I wish it would have been trimmed a little bit. We stay here for a long time. Um, Did you guys think about anything about the handball party and them drinking? Do you guys know anything about handball? That may be a better question. I didn't even know it was like a big thing in Iceland. (laughs) Apparently it's a big deal over there. I have to guess that anything is a big deal in Iceland. Sorry to your Iceland, <laughs> your Iceland listener, but I don't know anything We're about huge your country in culture. Iceland. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Corey, I don't want to jump too far to the ending, but there, we talked about how the mom kills the sheep. That That's one of the, the darker elements of this movie, right? Is while Ida, Ada, Ada is living in the house, there's the sheep who gave birth to her who's constantly just bleeding outside of the house. What, was that sad for you? What were you thinking? Were you annoyed by it? Um, I was thinking about sheep actors. <laughs> I was like, man, this is a good-ass sheep actor. Like, <laughs> It just goes to show like, uh, maybe that the direction is, is pretty well. Or, like The way they laid out the visual <laughs> storytelling works pretty well. Because like, I, I understand what this sheep wants pretty clearly. And like... <laughs> It's reactions to things like it's almost like you can read the look in its eyes. I'm like, damn, that's a fucking. I mean, you know, like there's good dog actors, like the mask. <laughs> this is a good sheep actor, <laughs> second to only Babe. I like the idea that like this director's really great at working with sheep. Like he's like talking to it, like, pre meetings. Like there's a lot of scouting and stuff. Yeah, sheep. like I... the sheep guy. Like, <laughs> oh, I know the guy. He's the best with sheep <laughs> in the business. I guess they really did take like one of that sheep's lambs and like had it in the house, and that's how they got it to do that bleeding i mean it's pretty dark if you think about it right because i mean like there's two mothers basically of the sheep who are both kind of claiming it and it's kind of ties into the themes of the nature versus humans and and humans versus nature and and what's right and you know humans pushing back i guess against nature and nature pushing back against humans but we talked about the lamb person we talked about it was as kind of teased earlier in the film um, you know I, the the Peter or the, the Peter plot. There's not a lot there. Um, he's eventually kicked out. But Corey, take us through the ending. I guess you know it's a shocking ending. It's a very A twenty four ending in a lot of ways, where it kind of like leaves you with like one of the most exciting parts of the movie. Did you like the the only violence that we get and kind of the the last shots here? Yeah, this is some A twenty four shit, isn't it? 
Yeah, Ingvar the dad and Ada the mutant sheep baby <laughs> who you guys described as cute. <laughs> she is cute. She's adorable. I don't know, man. <laughs> that flowery <laughs> midsummer crown that she wears oh, yeah. for part of it? Yeah, I was like, here we go. <laughs> the crown, right? Well, the, the, not to interrupt you, but like, if you don't buy Ada, then this movie is going to be like a fucking misery miserable like two hours for you yep so like i completely understand if you can't get past the like the absurdism of this film but if you can't get past it i guess i can <laughs> i'm just like she's adorable and she has all these little mannerisms they talk to her mm -hmm. and she can't speak back but she kind of like responds and twitches so i i can see it i see it for sure on that same track i love when the brother pedar is playing his drums and she starts doing her little sheep mm -hmm. baby dance to the drums i mean come on Corey, that's cute that's adorable. okay that part was cute all right you got me there and it's even cute when uh when peter's gonna give her grass she's gonna eat it it's so fucking messed up and i was laughing my ass off like he's beating her to the grass because he's trying to prove that she's an animal <laughs> all right so ada the sheep girl and ingvar the dad they are like i don't know out and about kind of separated from the house a little bit far away right and maria hears a fucking gunshot from the house. Now, she has to run out toward them. When she uh, is heading toward them, I think that's when it shows us, the audience, what actually occurred. And this is where we get full on, not, no obscurity, no beating around the bush, no covered in shadows. We see a six foot tall, muscular sheep man. Man mm -hmm. body with like fur woven in. And an angry as fuck sheep head. And this beast has um, shot the dad. Like the same way that the mom shot the mother sheep. It's kind of a badass shot of sheep man staring down the barrel of that gun. I could see that being memed or wallpapered or something like that. I, I kind of love that shit. Dude, it's 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 so heavy metal. Like like Satanists are jealous of this shit. Yeah. They couldn't think of like how like awesome this is. Is having a full like goat's head thing. That is probably the last thing you want to see before you die. <laughs> <laughs> I would be I'd be sitting there like holding my neck, going, "What the fuck is this?" Just like freaking out. Like I'm dying, but I have so many questions right now. <laughs> yeah, and we normally we when we have abstract questions, we have a host Stevie who's not on the podcast tonight. We like to ask him sort of those theoretical questions. Uh, Ronnie, let me ask you though. So what's, what's the deal with this, uh, environment habitat? So these sheep, do you think these sheep people live in the mountains and come down and procreate with sheep? Like how is this work? Like how does what's this function? The lore? Yeah, exactly. I must first say I'm no replacement for Stevie. Um, secondly, I didn't. I didn't really get caught up in that. I was just thinking more like metaphorical and thematically of just like how nature just has these weird anomalies and it just kind of has to do what it has to do to survive. So I didn't even like think about a whole tribe of sheepmen. Now I'm terrified and I don't want to go to Iceland ever. I'm so sorry to your <laughs> viewer, but it sounds terrifying to me. But I was just kind of thinking of this, like for me, it just goes with like nature is beautiful and also nature is fucking terrifying because you have at least for the few of us who buy into Ada. She's adorable, and it gives you kind of hope that humans can coexist. And then out of nowhere, Goatman comes in and says, fuck that, I'm going to shoot you in the neck. So that's where I was getting really caught up in that. But I guess theoretically, for sure, there's got to be a whole like cave full of, of goat men who just come on down to either fuck the sheep or fuck the women, whatever is you know open for them. I see. So it's like a, it's like a Bigfoot thing, right? Mm -hmm. Like... Oh. I, I listened to like a Bigfoot debate podcast, which was hilarious <laughs> that people believe that there's big feet or foots out there. Uh, but they're saying there's actually a society of them. But, you know, the way they travel and uh, is, is such a way that humans will only see like one at a time, maybe. But so, OK, so there's a bunch of these crazy goat mutant men. But, you know, this one just came down to like do his his breeding slash revenge getting. Or, or even better question: Are they like, are they like solitary creatures? Like, sure, like they're aware of each other's existence, but they don't like you know go in packs. But it wouldn't make sense because go well, sheep are in herds. You have, you have herds of goats, right? This is uh, this is where I need Shane here because Shane knows stupid fucking information about animals. <laughs> but uh, he'll, he'll come in, he'll come in with some kind of bullshit answer. But I don't know. He <laughs> seems kind of solitary because 
Like, if he could really just go find some more sheep to fuck, he would, wouldn't be, like, shooting Ingvar in the neck. Right. I'd like to think they have a whole society up in the mountains where they have this little pen of sheep bodies with human faces that they <laughs> breed and grow for <laughs> That's their terrifying. own domestication purposes. Um, yeah, I, you know, the ending, like I said, it's such an A24 ending. It really is the explanation point on this movie which is such a slow burn which is such a family drama you know other than the presence of ada ada this you know it, there's almost nothing supernatural in the film mm -hmm. right i mean there's nothing like really that you question there's no moments of of mystery it's really just this family drama wrapped up in oh we found this hybrid sheep baby i looked at the wikipedia and it says that this movie is a supernatural horror film would you agree with that? I don't. I don't get that. I don't get the, the horror, monocle for I, this at all. Like, go ahead. I go do. Ahead. It's there's always this like foreboding, ominous like feeling to it. Like like you guys saw the fish, fish man, the goat man. But um, but honestly, like I didn't see that. But there's always that that music. There's always that awkward like these long shots, these faraway shots of the house, and just like these. The slow camera movements through the the house and the halls like there's something not right and it's beyond just you know sheep baby there's obviously something else like surrounding these people that hasn't shown itself yet but obviously like like at one point that like the, the dog is killed we hear it yelping so it's constantly reminding you but for me i like my horror where it is like it's like a drama it's like kind of for me like the exorcist or like the uh, like like the witch where it's like there's there's this tension going on in the background but it's more about the family dynamic and then you slowly watch it unravel. So I, I can see the horror and even if it didn't have the ending, there had to be something maybe like, like when Peter comes back and sh sh kills Ingvar and jealousy, but I knew something was going to happen. I was always that looming threat. It's weird because you use the example of the witch, which gets kind of procedural and how they're living in, you know, pre-colonial North America. We, we see them, you know, surviving doing various things like hunting in the woods chopping wood how they have to set up their house and everything i i guess i prefer more of like the balance that another a24 movie hereditary offers where that's like 90 percent horror mm -hmm. but with this my themes of family drama underneath this is almost inverted this feels like it's 90 percent drama with a little bit of tension uneasiness uh, happening underneath, which is aided by the pace. I think that that has a big part of it. Corey, wh where would you put this in Blockbuster uh, if you had to categorize this DVD? <laughs> where would I put it in Blockbuster? Yeah. Behind a curtain somewhere. <laughs> yeah, this would in be the porn in the section. pornographic section, my friend. This is... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I have no idea. Like, I don't even remember the, the way they separated things at Blockbuster very well. I think... And this is probably wrong, but I think they had, like, you know, comedies, action family horror and then just like this huge section of drama which mm -hmm. was basically like everything else mm -hmm. that's the way i remember it i don't remember it being like a barnes and noble where there's like so many subcategories i think everything falls into drama ultimately at uh, the old school video stores it would be pretty great to put this in the family section with a nice happy picture of the sheep baby on the front <laughs> and you think you're getting into one thing but it's completely holding like the parent's hand as yeah. they <laughs> take a leisurely stroll through iceland Lamb, the ultimate family story. But once again, like the, that trailer, you cut out a couple like frames. It could play like, especially with, with like the Beach Boys song. It, it could play like a fun, like family friendly thing for the entire for the whole world. And then all of a sudden, oh look, there's tits. Oh my god, there's someone's getting shot in the throat. You're pulling out um, lambs or bit of lambs from vaginas. Oh my god, it's terrifying. Yeah, dogs are getting killed. That dog was such a good boy. <sighs> Which makes it an A24 movie. We used to talk about this all the time. There was a stretch where we reviewed like five A24 movies in a row, and all of them had a dog dying into it, and it almost became like a meme in film communities. It was like, what dog's going to die in this next A24 movie? Um, That's so funny. <laughs> the one dog. I just wish, like, I don't know, in terms of critical commentary, right? This is such a brilliant premise. It really is. And like you, the, the second you see the sheep baby and there's this moment in the trailer where the the sheep mom is giving birth to the sheep baby and the dad looks over at the mom and like he has this look of uh-oh in his eyes, right? Mm -hmm. like, like something's happened that's not supposed to happen. 
there's so many different ways to take this premise. I, I don't love how much we revel in the, like I said, the procedural of running this sheep farm, the, the family drama there. I feel like there's like a million different ways you could have taken this. This is one of the more boring avenues that they went down. Were you guys Mm. bored at all during this movie or, or were you entertained by seeing what we see? Okay, I want to quickly say it. I was entertained, but I like this kind of shit. This is, you know, especially if it's late night, and it was. I went to the movie theater very late night, and I was the only one in the theater. Same. Like, you can pretty much just put on Gone with the Wind on repeat, and I'm not getting bored. Like, I'm I'm in it at that point. Like, that's my perfect environment. But, quick, funny side note. I'm watching this fucking movie, Lamb. We know how dour it is, right? How gray it is, and how, like, isolated some like bro walks in the movie theater about 40 <laughs> minutes in. He sees I'm the only one in there. He looks at me, he says, is this 007? <laughs> like, <laughs> I swear to God. Did you say and yes? I said, no. <laughs> I said, no, this is lamb. <laughs> <laughs> no, please escort yourself out of your, you dude, bro. <laughs> Do you know what theater 007 is in? <laughs> this is like a 16 screen theater and i'm like i'm sorry i do not <laughs> i don't fucking work here dude <laughs> <laughs> ronnie I, I you you mentioned that you you tend to gravitate towards these a24 movies was there enough there happening throughout the course of the story to keep you engaged um here's the here's the thing and i guess it's i don't want to jump too far ahead to my recommendation because it's it's hard to recommend a24 to people in general it's mm-hmm. hard to recommend this too because I can see people seeing it as meandering and slow, but I think all the procedural stuff, as you like to call it, it really delves into the first half, first portion of this where it talks about their marriage being falling apart and like they're just going through the motions. Their marriage is rocky, it seems mundane. But then when Ada comes in, it gets less focused on the procedurals because it's like she revitalizes them and we're no longer focused on that. So. I could see if you wanted to trim it. I wouldn't. I'm super into that kind of just like put me in this world. And this is a a world that's not it's not it's a terrifying world that I don't want to live in. <laughs> no offense to Icelandic people or people who who love goat men, but I don't want to live in this world. But at the very least, it's, it's 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 a world in which like I fully understand the mechanics of like it's almost like a fairy tale. Like where it's it's very much like oh how boring, mundane life it is, and something out of the ordinary pops up and changes it forever. For all of our Icelandic listeners, Ronnie does not necessarily represent the opinions of the host on Spoilers (laughs) Podcast. We love you. We love you all. No, Um, I'm still mad at those bastards for what they did to the Mighty Ducks. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, they gave us Eurovision. He's singing in Icelandic. That's one of my favorite movies of of last year. Last note that I had, though, we'll get into your guys' final (laughs) thoughts. Maria, when... When she's holding her husband, her now deceased husband, Ingvar, um, the Wikipedia description says that she's in shock and sad and closes her tear-filled eyes. I I almost got, and maybe, maybe I misinterpreted this, but I almost got a small sense of relief from her performance, just in the sense that maybe she didn't want to be on that farm anymore and maybe she didn't want to be surrounded by the memories of the her child that she lost and that now rather than having to use a time machine she can kind of just leave and she's gotten this excuse to leave the last shot ronnie what, what were your feelings with that that final shot oh, uh, besides bleak and misery um <laughs> i i didn't get that i could see how you get that interpretation now thinking about it i was just got like it's just like this is shot with just the background this very grayness and she's all alone so she's kind of just stuck there now so you can see is liberating i see it more as like everything is taken away from her and i don't know if that ties into like the infidelity subplot i don't really get how that fully plays into it. i could see how it's like you know it's an unnatural perspective of marriage maybe but i don't know i got like bleak and misery so and i don't know this entire film i bought the premise I felt happy, even though this in the back of my mind, like this is gonna end miserably because I know who made this and I can tell. So it was almost like watching like the the Titanic, thinking like, "Oh, these people are gonna make it," and you're like, "Wow, I'm stupid. All these people are gonna die." It's Titanic. <laughs> it's yeah. like they're all gonna die. Like it, it has to. It's a twenty four. People are gonna die. It can't be end happily ever after. Corey, what were you feeling when the credits rolled? I also was kind of like reading into something more, right? In addition to her 
uh, weeping and, you know, suffering the loss of her adopted sheep mutant child and her husband, uh, young John Ritter, <laughs> you know, she she weeps and she lets it out. And then it's almost like something is going through her mind and there's no dialogue. There's a lot of places in this movie where there's no dialogue. So you're left to kind of read into it. I think we're supposed to read into something. I thought if maybe it were a lesser or maybe even just a different movie, it might become like a quiet place where she like picks up the shotgun and like pumps it and like then it ends there. Like she's coming after him now. Like I knew it wouldn't, but it was almost like it was about to go there. I had like a the thought run in my mind like 10 different ways of like if a different director like got their hands on this and had this idea like man, how like fucking weird but maybe entertaining in a bad way this movie could be with this like the half <laughs> lamb baby and then like you like you said the the I'm gonna go hunting or something like that well you know how alien is a slow burn and then aliens is this like action movie classic oh my god I, I want to see lambs where it's just her going up to the mountains and just killing sheep people like <laughs> like you know calling the mom lamb the, there's this giant mother lamb who's just giving birth to them and she calls him a bitch and she fights him with this <laughs> robot suit and yeah it could easily become like the end of hills have eyes like this revenge quest of just like <laughs> annihilating their whole society she calls in the Icelandic Marines and they're picked off one by one <laughs> and she's the last woman standing. There's, I think there's an interview with her. She talks about that jokingly saying there could be a sequel in the kind of that vein. So it's actually funny that you guys picked up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here for that movie. But any final thoughts from you guys? Anything we didn't talk about? Um, not your yes or no yet, but anything that we uh, should discuss? Um, I love how it's very visual it's uh, the, like the the language of cinema is alive in this movie where a lot of things are visual like you mentioned before there's not a lot of dialogue so i love that you have to kind of pay attention and like really see how the actors bring it alive with their their emotions their their uh, facial features and stuff and um i don't know i i like a lot of horror movies and i feel like this year has been like awful for horror movies i just saw halloween kills and that's an abortion compared to like it is to, oh no <laughs> to this so I'll cross it off my list. I don't need yeah. to see it. That's disappointing. It's well, it's only if you if you like Halloween movies and maybe you'll find something out of it. I I don't and whatever. Moving on. Point being is this movie was like a creepy, weird, miserable blanket of fresh air. <laughs> <laughs> Along those same lines, I'm really glad that I saw this on the big screen. Like I am for most A24 movies, but this particularly with the mountain vistas and the way that their pasture is like it's like this most idyllic place on earth right it's like got a stream and these mountains in the background and it looks like you know like i said like a wallpaper you'd have like <laughs> the windows default background it's beautiful but Co Corey, any final thoughts uh from your end yeah they they have a cat the family has a cat as well as a dog and the cat does not approve of anything <laughs> that's happening in this movie it's the most cat thing ever yeah, <laughs> this is the most disapproving cat I've ever seen. This cat is like, you motherfuckers are gonna die. This is not <laughs> not a good idea. I I really appreciate that. They could subtitle that cat. Well, actually, in 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 Icelandic lore, cats represent those who are, are indifferent to change and people who are bringing in outside beliefs. And I'm just talking shit. I don't know. <laughs> I was gonna oh, say, okay. yeah, you had me. nothing more indifferent than a cat, and it looks like every time I've ever brought a new animal to a home with a cat, the cat does the exact same face. Like, dude, what the fuck did you just bring into my house? <laughs> thing. But uh, Corey, anything else? Uh, any other? Uh, Brad Jones, aka the Cinema Snob, said that this movie is like a parody of an A twenty four movie, <laughs> which I thought was like a funny thought. Like, I was like, yeah, I could have written this. You know, when I compare this to something like Green Knights. Like, I could have never conceived of the Green Knight and all its deeper themes and meanings and, like, whatever the fuck is going on there. Uh, this movie, yeah, it, I could see that. It's almost like <laughs> it's almost like the paint-by-numbers A24 movie, but I don't, I don't want to say that in a too mean of a way. This could almost be an SNL sketch of an A24 movie, right? If you mm -hmm. like, drummed up some of the different parts. <laughs> and like you said, if, if the lamb was a little bit goofier and sillier, I could definitely see that. But if this is your first episode of Spoilers, we have a binary rating system. Yes or no. If everyone gives it a yes, it's, um, I forget what the preserved fret. I don't remember what we say. But if it's all knows, it's spoiled. <laughs> so uh, I'll go ahead and go first. Um, this is really tough. 
I'm going to give Lamb a very soft no. And I gave it three stars on Letterboxd. And a couple weeks ago, Brett yelled at me saying I should never give a movie I gave three stars to a no. But I I like A24 a lot. I really do. And, and I have an A24 shirt that Corey gave me. I wear it all the time. Um, <laughs> I go to see A24 movies in theaters as much as I can. I appreciate what they do in the world of cinema, especially now in the time that we live in. But it's just... <sighs> It's just kind of boring, you know, and like I, I I wish that the family drama tied into the existence of the lamb more. And I, we talked about sort of the infidelity and how it's not necessarily clear in the relationship with the brother. You know, if you wanted to go like full out, you could say, you know, Maria cheated on her husband Ingvar with his brother and Ingvar cheated on Maria with a sheep. And that would be shocking, but it would also be a very interesting dynamic that would sort of tie the movie together better. I feel like this falls for the A24 Mathemes trap, where there's just a little bit too much... It's weird to say in a a movie with three characters, but there's almost a little bit too much going on where it doesn't feel as cohesive. I don't really get the chapter structure in this. I, I don't... Stevie complains about that sometimes. I didn't really feel like that was necessary. I don't know how it fits in thematically with the story that's being told, but there's nothing to complain about in terms of the performances, the cinematography. Like I said, it's a brilliant concept. Um, it, it's fun to spend time, as weird as it is, it's fun to spend time in this bleak, fantastical world to some extent but at the, at the same time we're about halfway through this movie it's i want more sheep baby i want the <laughs> sheep baby to tie in more to the plot and like what's happening between the characters and it's really kind of the sheep babies over here and there's this family drama over here and these two stories are kind of happening in parallel with very little crossover between them so i and, and maybe it's just because there's so many other good things to watch right now I, maybe that contributes to it, but a very, very soft no. And I think I'm probably in the minority in this where I kind of like, eh, it's okay. I feel like for most people, it's going to be a very polarizing movie. You're going (laughs) to fucking hate it. You're going to love it. I'm kind of in between. I'm not mad that I saw it, but I I can't really say this is worth two hours of your time when there's so much great media out there at your fingertips today. Uh, Corey, we'll go, go to you next. All right. Yeah, this is Corey. You're right, Pappy. There's so much good content out there right now. You could have seen uh, The Addams Family 2 currently in theaters. Ugh. True. Uh, Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Ugh. The Jesus music is playing in theaters. Ugh. Oh, my God. These are great. Halloween Kills. Hey, listen, <laughs> I'm almost caught up with Squid Games, okay? That's what I'm into right now. There's a lot Finally, of good TV Finally, you'll there. be able to understand good memes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I also like A24 movies, Pappy. I actually have two A24 shirts. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> oh, I thought you gave me your only one. I feel a little less special now. <laughs> Got your extras. Ah, uh, so many A24 shirts. You know, I wear them out so people know I'm a straight-up cinephile, baby. Uh, let's see. This movie is pretty fucking weird, but it wants to be that so bad. Uh, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I I can see the Brad Jones perspective like, okay, you're doing A24, we get it. I could see that perspective, but I'm not really sitting there myself. I just, I I like this kind of thing where I'm at right now. And it's like, uh, I think maybe, Pappy, I was was getting a a hint of like maybe A24 fatigue in in your description there. I'm not sure if I'm, I don't mean to, you know, pass that on to you, but I'm (laughs) still there. I'm not, I haven't quite gotten in that place yet so i'm still into these very slow burn like weird there's some kind of supernatural freaky element there's going to be a big moment of uh, gore it's just it's really the kind of thing i like in a movie so i'm going to give it a yes uh it's not like the greatest version of this but it's still like cool to watch and i think if you see that trailer and you're like yeah i like these kind of movies i think you will at least for the most part I do agree, though, that this movie would be polarizing if it were more mainstream, maybe. Because I think a lot of the people that don't like this kind of movie saw the trailer and were like, nope, that ain't for me. Um, But let's say everyone did see this. I definitely think this would be more on the 50-50 yes or no realm among common audiences. Um, 
I have a question for you guys, but I'm going to wait till after Ronnie goes. So I'm done. Okay. I, I will say maybe something that's contributing to the A24 fatigue is them always killing dogs. Like I mentioned, <laughs> hey, just stop doing that. You, yeah, you're come done, on. You've done it enough. We get it. But last but not least, Ronnie, it's been great having you. You're a fantastic guest representing the Wasted Potential podcast exemplarily well. What do you give Lamb? Oh, I'm so apprehensive. Um, I love this. I love this film, and and it's kind of the like opposite reasons for kind of reasons is I like how it surprised me because I thought it was gonna go one way where it's absolute batshit crazy of man goat fucking extreme violence, and it was nuts. It was a, a, a and to my opinion, a lovely family story about kind of giving over the past, and then. The A24 kicks in the end says, oh, you were happy? Fuck that. Kick in the groin, <laughs> shot in the neck. You're not going to be happy because nature always kicks your ass. We're going old school, like, you know, um, Jack London novels. You can't beat nature. Nature's a bitch. But um, I loved it, but I don't know who to recommend this to is the problem. What about Shane? Oh, fuck no. Um, uh, <laughs> sh- this is one of those movies where it's like you you have to be on board with the premise and the weirdest thing is, like you said, uh, Pappy, like, like, it's not even about the lamb, really. Like, it's, it's it's like what the lamb represents. So, like, if you're looking for something like, like bonkers, shit, crazy, of like that, you're not gonna get it. You'll be disappointed. So, if you're looking for a, a like, it's a nice, nice and miserable balance of a movie that's got like a family drama going on, I check it out. But who the fuck wants that? Like, only, only like, what, Corey and I? Like, I don't really know. So it's apprehensive, <laughs> yes, but I think, like you said, you see the trailer, you know A24, you know this is for you or not, and so, eh, I want to watch this again, but I don't think I can recommend this to just an average viewer. Obviously, if you live in Iceland, this is, like, the number one Icelandic movie of all time, so go represent the number one movie. <laughs> hey, that's a joke, but it's also true. So <laughs> the oh, most this is the fans. one thing they've done. <laughs> hey, and I thank you, Icelandic people. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. There we and, go. And I've seen absolute shit recently. There's tons of media. I think it's all of it's just been really like lame. Next week we're getting well, this week we're getting Dune. I'm excited for things end of the year. But it's been slow, so I this is a beautiful movie in my opinion. Wait, was that a yes? Oh, sorry, it's an apprehensive yes. An apprehensive okay. yes. I, I think that's pretty fair. Two yeses, one no. Corey said you had a question for us, though. Yeah. Pappy. Yes. Would you fuck a sheep? Is it... Which end's the sheep? Like a, like a sheep? A, a sheep. hybrid? No, no. A, no. Not... If, if, if you were a sheep, would you fuck a sheep? If I was a sheep, would I fuck a sheep? Absolutely. Yeah, this sure. motherfucker ain't one of us. He said he'd fuck a sheep. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> That's pretty fucked. <laughs> I mean, listen. If I was a sheep, I would be all about the horny goat weed for sure. I'd be all up in that. No <laughs> horny doubt. Horny goat weed. Yeah. Oh, I haven't heard of that in a long time. <laughs> um, but... That's like I said. I think that's a pretty fair assessment. I did not hate this movie by any means. I waffled all the way up until we hit record on what I was gonna say on this movie. But uh, wait, wait, real quick too, yeah, we yeah. did we didn't do the obvious discussion. So real quick, yeah, yeah, is the uh, Lamb the Jesus character? Mm. I don't know. I don't like Jesus, but I love Ada. I, I I don't know. I was trying to think of like how it could be the Jesus character. I was like, well, like the Lamb of God. That's obvious. Born under mysterious circumstances. And then that was all I came up with. Well, so. <laughs> well, she's obviously not a virgin, so I don't think um, Maria will qualify for that one. But Ave Maria, you have the whole thing. That's a good point. I like to think that the goat man is the Jesus character. He just comes back and, like, fucks shit up. You know what I mean? Like, kind of a revel- uh, revelation style uh, <laughs> revengeance. Uh, but yeah, good, great questions, Corey. And I have <laughs> one you. question for you. In typical spoilers fashion, we, we do have a very brief trivia question uh this is just for funs funs and giggles Corey, we'll start with you closest to how many sheep per humans are there in iceland sheep per human ratio hmm iceland has a lot of people i think it's like big or am i thinking of greenland fuck the All vikings right. tricked in- work on you the, the vikings <laughs> gotcha <laughs> God damn those assholes. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go with there's there's at least 60 sheep 
for every human being. Oh, okay. I was going to go 1,000 to 1. I was going big. <laughs> there are an estimated 800,000 sheep in Iceland and 324,000 humans in Iceland. So 2.4 sheep per human. Not, not as many <laughs> as you guys were thinking, but <laughs> this poll did not include sheep-humanoid uh, hybrids that live in the mountains. So maybe you guys are closer if we factor in <laughs> that society. But Ronnie... Once again, great having you. Do you want to just plug your podcast uh, one more time so everyone can go subscribe to subscribe to that? Yeah, uh, Wasted Potential Podcast. We just talk over movies. We talk over each other. We drink and ramble. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Apple, other podcast places. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and, you know, the usual places. But uh, thanks for having me, guys. Fan of your podcast, and I appreciate the support you're giving us. Absolutely. Corey is the one who initiated uh, you coming on. So great job, Corey. Way to grab a guest. Great work. Yeah, there. absolutely. Glad to have you. And, you know, we're going to do some more collabs together, which I'm excited for. Uh, I just want to also say, in terms of wasted potential, I know I mentioned Free Willy, but also check out Lady in the Water. <laughs> These guys watched Lady in the Water for you. Like, <laughs> the, the shit they had to endure to create a podcast. Like, yeah, I mean, I saw that you guys did Jaws 3, but, like, Lady in the Water is, like, next level fucking shit movie <laughs> yeah um if, if it wasn't obvious from the terrible things i'm saying um we uh if you are the faint of hearts or you don't like uh inappropriate words then stay clear from us and just give us money <laughs> <laughs> if, if you don't like inappropriate words i doubt you made it this far on your spoilers journey but make sure you support wasted potential make sure you support big dumb movie and make sure you listen to spoiler man right now tell you how you can support this podcast take it away spoiler man special thank you to our patrons matt troll <laughs> brother brian <laughs> druid king <laughs> Nick, The Meg, David, Nurse Stacy, Brother Ellis. If you'd like to request an episode, hear your name read by Spoiler Man, or even just help us make podcasts, please check us out on patreon.com slash spoilers podcast. Our email is podcastspoilers at gmail.com. Twitter is at spoilers underscore pod. Our Instagram is Podcast Spoilers. It's lit. Josh Hensley from the Rutabaga wrote our theme song. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. That was Spooky Spoilers.